Dynamic range is very important thing to understand. And in this video, I will tell you what it is and why it's important. Hi there, I'm Peter Forsgaard, an Olympus visionary from Helsinki, Finland. And before we get into the dynamic range thing and HDR photography, please consider subscribing to my channel and hit that bell so you get notified when there is a new video online. My channel is all about you getting to be a better photographer and of course about Olympus gear. And remember, I post two videos a week, usually on Tuesdays and on Fridays. But let's start talking about dynamic range and HDR. In photography, dynamic range means the luminance of the scene. So, if you have a high dynamic range in your scene, then you have very dark shadows and very light, bright lights. And if the dynamic range is low, then you have a very gray image. That's the simple answer to dynamic range. And if the shadows are really dark and the highlights are really bright, it might be so that your camera cannot record all the details in the dark and all the details in the highlights. You need to choose which one you want. But there are ways so that we can overcome this problem. Well, first you can add some light to the dark scenes and to make the contrast and the dynamic range a bit smaller. But of course it's not possible all the time. If you're making landscape shots, it's almost impossible to light the dark areas in a landscape. But if you have a smaller object or a portrait, it can be done by adding some more light that will light up the subject. By adding some light to your subject, it will make the dynamic range of the scene less and then it's possible for your camera to record that so that you have details in the highlight and in the shadow. What about the landscape then? If there is a very bright sky and a dark forest in the foreground, one solution could be a graduated ND filter. The top side has an ND filter and then it gradually lightens to be just plain glass. And positioning this to a correct spot, it will darken the sky and you can have better exposure and you will have less dynamic range in the scene. Or, or this, actually the dynamic range of course is the same, but the ND filter will block some light so that it will make the exposure easier to make. So that you have some details in the sky and details in the dark forest. This is a very common way of handling if you are making landscape photography. Well, then, then of course you can do something in post. But remember, opening up the shadows will introduce some noise. But if the noise level that you get is not a problem for you, this is a very handy way. I use it all the time to open up the shadows a bit. If you don't do it too much and if you don't use very high ISOs, then this method is really, really good. And then you have the third option. Use the highlight shadow feature in your Olympus camera. This will brighten up the shadows and darken the highlights if you want. It's a very handy tool. It works in some cases, but of course it doesn't work all the time. But it's, it's one way of doing it. You can activate it by pressing FN2 button and then you use the front dial for highlights and back dial for shadows. And then if you want to adjust the midtones, then press info button and then you can control the midtones. Then there is a very interesting method called HDR, which stands for high dynamic range. What it actually means is that you blend several images that are taken with different exposures together in post or in camera. And all Olympus OMD cameras have HDR feature. Some of them have a dedicated button and then the EM10 Mark III has it under mode dial in advanced photo mode. You need to choose the HDR from there. And Olympus cameras have several different modes of HDR. You got HDR1, HDR2, and then you have some other options that I will talk a bit later. But let's start with HDR1 and HDR2. They both modes take four images and blend those images together in camera. And you get a high dynamic range image and it will use the high sequential so you can do this also handheld. But of course, if there is a lot, lot of moving stuff in the images, then it might not be that easy to blend those images together and you might get some weird movement or some weird artifacts in your image. And a pro tip if you have a lot of moving objects and want to take your HDR image, you can use longer shutter speed so there will be motion blur, it will reduce the artifacts that causes by the moving subject. It might look a bit pleasing, something worth a try if you have a lot of moving subject in your image and want to use HDR. 
mobile phones use HDR all the time. So that's why sometimes a photo taken with the mobile phone might look a bit better than a normal photograph from a proper camera. But if you want to have the mobile phone look, you can use HDR1 or HDR2 in your casual photography. Just remember what I said about the moving object in the image. What's the difference between HDR1 and HDR2? Well, HDR1 is more natural looking. The HDR2 is quite aggressive and I don't really like the way it makes the image. So HDR1 is the one that I like to use if I use HDR. And then when you use HDR1 or HDR2, as I said, it will blend the images inside the camera and it will only save the HDR image. And it saves them both in RAW and in JPEG. Then you have the other options where you have a bit more control. This feature is not included in EM10 Mark III. And what the other options are? They are 3 frames with 2.0 EV difference, 5 frames with 2.0 EV difference and 7 frames with 2.E difference. And then there is 3 and 5 frames with 3.0 EV difference. So what it means, if you take 5 images with 2 EV difference, you get 2 dark images one neutral image and two bright images. And the EV values are minus 4 EV, minus 2 EV, 0 EV, plus 2 EV and plus 4 EV. So the difference between the darkest and the lightest image is 8 stops. And with 7 images and 2 EV, you have 12 stops. And the same goes with the 5 images with 3.0 EV. You have 12 stops there also. That's quite a lot of dynamic range that you can get with HDR. On these options, the camera does not blend those images together. It only records the individual images and you need to do the HDR in post, which I will talk a bit later in the video. I will show you how you can do it in Lightroom. As I said, when you turn on the HDR, it will use the high sequential mode and you can make HDR images handheld, which is a really good option. But of course, be careful not to move the camera between shots unless you want some really wacky results. And if you have a possibility to use tripod, why not? Well, the HDR mode uses those preset EV differences that I told you. But there is also so-called expose a bracketing that you can find in the bracketing menu. This way you can have a different EV values. The EV difference from image to image depends on what you have set to be the EV step in the menu system. If you have one stop, then the difference is one stop. And if you have set it half a stop, then it's half a stop. And then if you have one third of a stop, then you have one third of a stop difference in your expose or bracketing. But remember, this method does not use high sequential, so you need to take the images separately and it might not be that easy to do handheld. So you most likely will need a tripod. If you have chosen two images in the bracketing mode, then you can choose if the first image is overexposed or underexposed. It will take one image EV0 and the other one either plus or minus. It depends on your settings. And of course it depends on how you have exposed your image, which one you want the other image to be, over or underexposed. Two image method is very good for landscape photography. Take the first image, expose the sky correctly, and then the second image expose the darker areas correctly, and blend those images in post together. And you will have a HDR image with less dynamic range, and you can see the details in the sky and in the dark areas. And then the promised quick tip how to do it in Lightroom. Uh, choose the images that you have taken with different exposures, choose photo merge and HDR. Lightroom will open a window and you have some options that you can tweak. Auto align will align the images if there is a bit of different crop. Let's say that you've taken this handheld, then there might be a slight movement in between shots. Ticking this on will align the images perfectly and it works pretty well. And then I recommend to having auto settings on when doing the HDR. It just works better. Then there is the de-ghost adjustment and if there are some ghosting which actually means that the images are not perfectly aligned and even though you have the aligned ticked on you might use the de-ghost but most likely if you have auto align on you don't need to use this so this most likely is better to have off or none. And then press merge and you will have a HDR image. And as you saw, it's quite easy to make HDR images even in post with Lightroom. It's automated, but it makes very good results. And if you want to tweak some more, 
then you need to have some other dedicated HDR software. And as you saw, HDR is a very good method of getting less dynamic range in your images so that you can have details in the shadows and in the highlights. And three things to remember. Handheld HDR is possible and remember to try to hold the camera as steady as possible to get the best result. And use the auto align if you are making the HDR images in post. And second thing to remember, if you don't want to do anything in post, use HDR1 which will give you a quite natural result. The HDR2 is a bit unnatural in my liking, so I prefer HDR1. And third thing to remember, always experiment and try the other options too, where the camera makes only the individual images. Try 7 images, 2.0 EV and see what the results are. And remember, you can also record these in RAW. And you might want to watch these videos next. The top one is about live comp and the other one is about getting your JPEGs as best as possible. But hey, thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video.